Hello, uh, my name is Rasmus Bro, um, and I just wanted to make this uh, little video uh, to show you how you can make TU plots in PLS toolbox. They're also known as inner relation plots. They basically plot the scores in the X space versus the scores in the Y space, which can be useful for detecting certain types of uh, outliers. I've uh, prepared a little data set here. Uh, it's basically just some spectral data, uh, which produces a nice model. The background is not really important here. Uh, it's NIR data uh, of beer samples trying to predict uh, something called extract, a uh, quality parameter. Uh, we can make a model. Uh, I'm just going to use mean centering of X and of Y and four components. In this case, the right number of of components would be around four to six or something like that. But that's not really the important point here. We can look at the predictions uh, of this model. Uh, so those are the calibrated predictions, not the uh, cross-validated ones. But it's uh, pretty close uh, to what we would get if we did the cross-validation. We see a nice linear relationship. Now, what I want to do now is that I want to introduce an error. So instead of having a low value for sample number two, for example, I'm going to give this a high uh, Y value, meaning that it's going to be completely off. This is sort of the type of samples uh, that we would expect to see in this inner relation plot. So I'm simply going to manually introduce a wrong uh, value, 16, for sample number two, and I'm going to make a new model, and then we're going to plot the predictions uh, and see how that looks. And what we see now is that the predictions don't really look uh, as nice anymore. And it's not really obvious uh, what's wrong. Sample number two is a little bit outlined here, but it's not really clear uh, exactly why the model is so much worse than the model up here. Now, in order to figure out how to do a TU plot in the PLS toolbox, we have to dig a little bit into the help of PLS and from there we can actually see that there is a function which is basically the NIPALS algorithm and the NIPALS algorithm will provide you with sort of all the parameters of the traditional PLS model, including the scores in X and the scores in Y. So the T and the U. So what we can do is that we can run this model. And now, let me just close this one. We're going to have a four component model uh, on mean centered wrong data, the data where I sort of gave a wrong value for one of the Ys. And now we can make the TU plot, because now we have the four-dimensional score matrix in X and in Y. And now we can plot the first column of T versus the first column of U, uh, and etc. That's what we're doing here. And when you do that, you will see that indeed it's, it's sort of obvious. Let me just run this. Here we are. It's sort of obvious here that uh, sample number two is uh, special. This is the TU plot for the first component, for the second component, etc. And normally we expect a linear relationship here. That's sort of the basis of uh, the PLS algorithm, trying to find a linear relation between X and Y scores. And we see that one sample is breaking this quite clearly, and even more so in uh, some of the other components. Uh, but but the interpretation here is kind of straightforward and uh, very simple. Uh, that there seems to be something wrong in the relation between X and Y. Now, this was a sort of complicated or nerdy or command line way to show this. Um, there is no uh, direct way of getting this from the graphical user interface. But I want to uh, show you what you would get from the user interface. And here I'm making it manually, so it looks a little complicated, but it's just to show you what is being calculated in the default sample plot that you get in, uh, in PLS toolbox. So if I run this, 
I'm gonna produce influence plot, a score plot, a cross-validated prediction plot, etc. So this is the standard plot that you would get if you do a PLS toolbox and make a score plot from a four component model in this case. And here we see that sample number two has a very high Q residual. Sample number two also has an extremely high studentized uh, student residual, uh, more than five or four at least uh, standard deviations uh, away from uh, perfect. And also, of course, the cross-validated prediction is going to be completely off uh, in a model like this. Um, so here, it's actually pretty obvious to see what we also saw from the TU plot. So uh, we don't really need the TU plot. The TU plot is nice and you can make it if you want, uh, if you can work in the command line. Uh, but you can get more or less the same type of information by just using some of the plots that are already uh, available as uh, default plots in the PLS toolbox. Okay, I hope this was uh, useful. Um, and let me know if you have any comments to this or questions. Thank you.